Welcome back. We will continue with the session on attitudes. We, in the last uh, lecture, we came to know what is attitude, what are the components of attitude, um, how attitude affects behavior and behavior affects um, attitude. We came to know about the um, theory of recent actions. Um, now, in this um, session, we will try to focus on the attitudes present in the workplace and that was a general discussion about attitudes and here we will try to concentrate upon the attitudes that are present in the workplace. So, just a brief again about attitudes, its attitudes help us to determine or help the organization to determine how employees will perceive their environment, commit themselves to the intended actions and ultimately behave in the organization. So, because managers are interested about the employees attitude because they, they will come to know then how their employees behave to um, when attitudes towards what are the attitudes of the employees towards their job, towards their career and to the organization as a whole. The, in, attitudes which are very important, employee attitudes which are important to employers are job satisfaction, job involvement, organizational commitment, employee engagement and work mood which we will discuss in the, in the subsequent lecture and this lecture also. Jobs is the first first uh, attitude that we'll be discussing over here. Attitude in the workplace that we'll be discussing over here is um, job satisfaction. Job satisfaction has been defined as the favorable or unfavorable feelings and emotions with which the employee view their work. Job satisfaction is an affective attitude that is a feeling of relative like or dislike towards something. A job satisfaction is different from the intellectual response of the employee towards his or her work and the employee's behavioral intention. So, job satisfaction is either a favorable or unfavorable opinion that you have about the job and consequently you have job satisfaction or or when you when you have unfavorable feeling it's called job dissatisfaction so pleasurable it, it it is also defined as a pleasurable or a positive emotional state resulting from the appraisal of one's job or job experience and it is an appraisal of the perceived job characteristics, work environment and emotional experiences at work. So, so you, you, you can see like uh, the, there is a great, while you are talking of job satisfaction, individual differences also play a major role in the sense we are talking of appraised. Uh, it is from the appraisal of one's job or job experience and we are talking of the perceived job characteristics. So, perception, one's perception of the job characteristics, how one forms judgment about some of the job characteristics, these are important factors in determining the job satisfaction of a particular person and individual differences like the personality, perception, level of motivation factors which motivate a particular person, all, all these factors play inter important determining role in deter for job satisfaction of a particular employee. Likewise, we can tell about the sources of job satisfaction. So, job satisfaction can be viewed as an overall attitude or it can be applied to various parts of an individual's job. So, you can uh, take job satisfaction as a single question as a overall experience like are you satisfied with um, your job or uh, which is a generalized job satisfaction that we speak about or, or you can talk about job satisfaction with um, 
different uh, facets and aspects of the job. So, different aspects of job satisfaction include wages, working conditions, nature of work, promotion, supervision and work group. Some of these are directly related to the job content or the nature of the job and some are related of course to the job context that is supervisor, co-workers and organization. So, the, these are again related to the aspects of motivation we will find out like when you are talking of job satisfaction and factors related to the job and factors which are contextual factors which are related to the job context. Maybe we can relate with Herzberg's theory of motivation regarding hygiene factors and motivators um, and how it leads to um, satisfaction of an employee, what motivates and how it leads to satisfaction of employees. So, we will consider that theory again while, while we are discussing motivation. ways of measuring job satisfaction. So, one, one is a rating scale where which is called like job descriptive index by Smith, Kendall and Hulin, where the factors that are considered are pay, promotion, supervision, work and co-workers. We have a next question questionnaire which is called Minnesota satisfaction questionnaire. Which, which deals with 20 different areas like ability, utilization, achievement, activity, advancement in the job, authority, com satisfaction regarding company policies and practices, compensation, co-workers, creativity, independence, moral values, recognition, responsibility, security, social service, social status, supervision, human relation, supervision, technical, variety in the work and working condition. So, this is regarding the um, whole it is satisfaction questionnaire is regarding the whole aspects of this job and the organization and situations contextual factors present level type of supervision that you get the whether you get independence in your job or not whether you are properly compensated what are the company HR policies and practices whether you are um, given a career advancement or not, what is the working condition, what is the level of security that you are getting out of doing this job, whether creativity is allowed or not. So, a focus has been made from different aspects to find out whether you are satisfied with the job or not and what as aspect, what, what facet is more satisfying for you in the job that you are doing. Other um, techniques are critical incident techniques, interviews, action tendencies and existing in, um, information. So, in critical incidents what happen like you are given some critical, you are asked to report some critical incidents like which has occurred throughout the day. and. Um, you have to report like whether it was a satisfying experience for you or uh, not and in interview you are interviewed about your experiences in the organization and um, action tendencies and existing information also are similarly ways to measure job satisfaction existing information present in the organization about the stories and information present about the satisfaction um, of the employees. So, these, these could be the measures of job um, satisfaction. Consequences of job satisfaction is um, productivity like reduced turnover, absenteeism, tardiness, presenteeism, and job stress and unionization. So, we will just focus on presenteeism over here. This is a behavior um, where, where you, are, you are present physically, 
but uh, yeah, mentally you may not be present. So this is a behavior like absenteeism means you are away, from, you are physically not present in the organization. But presenteeism is a behavior where you are present in the organization, but physically, but mentally you are not there. You are absent from the job mentally. So that behavior is somewhat more alarming because you cannot just tell like you, you were not there, you were not there as you are absent. But the employee is present but still he is not there mentally. So job stress and unionization are other factors of job um, satisfaction or, or, or dissatisfaction. Improved physical and mental health are also related to job satisfaction. Customer satisfaction is one of the important areas like when, when you have a satisfied employee, it leads to better employee performance and customer satisfaction. What are the supervisory actions for maintaining satisfaction or maintaining open lines of communication, create a good physical environment, remedy for a substandard condition, transfer of discontent employees, change the perception of dissatisfied employees, display concern for employees, give ample recognition, allow for participative management, practice good management, conduct moral building programs. Point uh, six and um, seven. Uh, that is and point number one that is maintaining open lines of communication, displaying concern for employees and giving ample recognition are important points, important ways of giving the message to the employee that you are important members for us. We, we really feel for you and we think about you. This, this generates a good feeling about the em, of the employee about the organization and may lead to job satisfaction. Mm. Responses to job dissatisfaction mm, could be in like if you get there could be four responses. So job satisfaction and job dissatisfaction are taken to be two separate continuum and when factors responses to job satisfaction could be in two like it depends on two things like whether whether it is a response could be either destructive in nature or could be constructive in nature. It could be active or passive in nature. So when it is um, passive and destructive, what you do is you start neglecting your job. So silently what you do, you neglect your job. Um, when it is passive but constructive in nature, you do not harm the major mission of the organization but you are passive then what you do you show general loyalty but there is no passion in the work that you are doing if if it is you know, passive um, if sorry if it's active and if it is um, destructive in nature uh, then what you do you exit and this is a sometimes if a competent worker is leaving the organization uh, on whom like organization depended much for its performance or the organization has invested much on training development of that employees. This exit is a major loss for the company in terms of the human resource that is that has been lost. Uh, so that active and destructive is the way of showing your job dissatisfaction is exit. 
constructive and active in nature is your voice, voice your dissatisfaction and try to find out ways of um, solving the issues which leads to job dissatisfaction. So, you do not exit, but you try to voice, you make others known about your dissatisfaction and the reasons for it and you try to find out a solution for solving it. That is a constructive and active way of showing your dissatisfaction. Employee satisfaction is a broader term with which denotes a general satisfaction of the employees with the organization. Employee satisfaction is a terminology which is used to describe whether employees are happy and contented and fulfilling their desires and needs at work. Many measures purport that employee satisfaction is one of the factors in employee motivation, employee goal achievement and positive employee morale in the workplace. Um, employee satisfaction um, again it is um, while, while it is very good for the organization again it, it, it could be like somewhat um, somewhat uh, danger if the mediocre employees um, who are not performing well um, stay back in the organization because um, they, they stay because they are satisfied with your work environment. So, you have to employee satisfaction in that way does not mean like it will always lead to better organizational performance. You have to find out who are these employees who are better satisfied with my organization, are they better performers also. Factors contributing to employee satisfaction include treating employees with respect, providing regular employee recognition, empowering employees, offering above industry average benefits and compensation providing employee perks and company activities and a positive management within success framework of goals, measurements and expectations. Out of these the three points which are highlighted, treating employees with respect, providing regular employee recognition and empowering employees are more important because offering above industry average benefits and compensation and providing employee parks and company activities may not be possible for all types of organizations, but what is definitely possible is providing treating employees with respect and somewhat recognizing them not, not even with some even not with monetary benefits just uh, good words gestures these are important for um, generating employee satisfaction. So, employee satisfaction is generally measured um, through questionnaires to study the employee satisfaction with areas like um, management, then understanding of mission and vision of the organization, empowerment, teamwork, communication and co-worker interaction. The facets um, may vary from company to company. So, as you can see the facets of job satisfaction is somewhat considered, it revolves around the job itself, but while you are talking of facets of employee satisfaction, it revolves around the whole practices of the organization, the mission, vision, the way the empowerment is done, the team or communication, different organizational processes and design factors and also HR policies and practices. So, employee satisfaction is a more general term about satisfaction with the organization and job satisfaction is pivotal to the job itself. Job involvement is the next concept of that we are discussing. Job involvement is an attitude towards the work role 
and its contexts. Conceptual definition of job involvement have been of two basic types. One regard it as reflecting the degree to which person's sense of esteem is affected by job performance. The other tells views it as the centrality of the work and the job context to the individual's self image. So, it is it's both way like how the job that you are doing it is affecting your self esteem whether it is below or below your esteem or it is boosting your self esteem or not. And the second way is how it helps in defining how, how much central the work, work and the job context is in, in defining your self image. So, both the ways there is definition of like job, it, it will show job involvement. If the work is like you define your identity um, to some extent by the job that you are doing, that also shows to some extent the job involvement and also the job you are doing the other way like how it is affecting your esteem needs both ways it can lead to lead to job involvement. Organizational commitment, organizational commitment or employee loyalty is, um, is the degree to which an employee identifies with the organization and wants to continue actively participating in it. It is a measure of the employee's willingness to remain with the firm in the future. So, if you see like if you are progressing as a uh, in a skill job satisfaction is, um, is, is a satisfaction with the job itself. Next, we can talk of job involvement like, like I am not only satisfied with the job, but I try, I try to see the job as a part of my own self and then try to identify with it and then when you are talking of organizational commitment the it, it is a broader aspect in where we find like we are not only involved in the job that we are doing but we are also committed or loyal to the organization and employee identifies with the organization and want to continue to actively participate in it it is an employee's willingness to remain in the firm in the future. Types of organizational commitment could be number one which is continuance commitment. It is the need to stay in the organization based on the cost of living or a sense that available comparable alternatives are limited. So, continuance commitment here is what happens is um, like you continue with the organization because you the options for you to go somewhere else is very less and there is a cost of living and you, you know like you are not competent enough to get job elsewhere. So, so what you do is you drag yourself to the organization and you continue over there. So, it is out of that deficiency need that you have like you will not get job elsewhere, you continue with the organization. Normative commitment is a desire to stay with the organization based on a sense of duty, loyalty or moral obligation. So, you stay with the organization 
because you feel like it's your responsibility to do so, you feel obliged to do so and like it's your moral obligation or as a part of your loyalty you stay back. Affective commitment is the emotional commitment, emotional attachment that a person feels for the job because they see their goals and values to be congruent with that of the organization. This part of commitment is actually which is desirable uh, for the growth of both the employee and the organization, the emotional attachment with the organization and the matching of the goals and values of the organization and that of the individual employee. This is very much essential for better performance and effectiveness of the organization because employees can like identify with the organizational goal and do not feel deprived like the organization is trying to get its own goal achieved and is not careful, it is not uh, paying heed to the employee's growth needs. So, when this alignment is there, the effective commitment is there, then organizational performance is better. Factors that inhibit employee commitment are excessive blaming, then insincere gratitude, failure to follow through, inconsistencies and incongruities, inflated egos and bullying. So, if there is an excessive blaming of the employees, then if there are inconsistencies and incongruities in the feedback given, and now a while you are praised for certain things, next moment you are um, like scolded for doing the same thing. One person is being rewarded for certain things, the other person is not rewarded for doing the particular thing. When practices vary within the organization, then, then it may inhibit employee commitment like bullying also and blo bloated egos like I am the best performer and I know better than the others and these type of things may lead to less of employee commitment. I am um, like I am superior for this organization. I am much better than what this organization deserves than the, than the sort of employee that this organization deserves will lead to less of employee commitment. Factors that um, stimulate employee commitment are clarity of rules and policies, investment in employees that is training respect and appreciation for efforts, employee participation and autonomy, making employees feel valued. So, these are important factors which stimulate commitment. So, making employees feel valued is very important, but again it, it has to be like you have to put a check on that, that it does not lead to inflated egos of the employees, so proper procedures for making people valued, then respect and appreciation for efforts, putting efforts in their investments in employee training. So, these, these are important factors that may stimulate commitment. Next, next we move on to a very important um, attitude where like now till now what, what we have come through is um, job satisfaction, employee satisfaction, job involvement, organizational commitment. The, these are like somewhere that there is a, like employees do what they are asked to do uh, by the 
organization. But when there, there is a simultaneous, um, simultaneous um, use of like affective commitment, then, then your job involvement and all, both these things come together and people, people feel a vested interest in the company's success and are willing to act to a level which exceeds the job requirement state goes beyond goes uh, goes an extra mile beyond uh, passionate enough to go beyond and um, takes vested interest in doing something extra um, than the that exceeds the stated job requirements then that is called employee engagement it is a um, discretionary behavior voluntarily taken by the employees without being forced by someone to do it uh, to um, in, do something wh which elicits highest productivity um, of the employees their best ideas and genuine commitment to the success of the organization because you are not forced to do these things it, you do it out of your own you do it voluntarily because you are passionate about the job or the organization and you love to do that for the organization so these psychological state where employees feel a vested interest for the company's success and do something extra beyond what is stated in the job requirement is known as employee engagement. So, if you can see the progression, satisfied employees perform their jobs and are satisfied with the terms and conditions of employment. However, they tend not to go above and beyond in their efforts. Motivated em employees in addition to sharing some of the attributes of satisfied employees, motivated workers contribute energetically and are highly focused individual contributors to the organization. So, they, they, are, they are motivated to do certain things, they are energized performance and they contribute to the um, um, contribute to the organizational goal. Committed employees have thoroughly internalized the values and behaviors represented by the earlier stages of the engagement model, but also have forged a strong identification with the organization. So, this is very important in the committed employees there is a sense of organizational identification where the employees identify with the um, organization, it, it starts becoming um, the organization starts become, um, becoming a part of the employees own self and they get the um, identity, identify with the organization, their self gets defined by the organizations um, organization. So, that is committed. When you are talking of engagement model, the last stage which is the advocate stage, the freely contribute discretionary effort of willingness to go that extra distance in executing projects and regular duties. They feel a mutuality of interest between his or her values and aspirations and those of the organization. So, when I can identify myself, myself with the organizational self and we find there is a match map of our values and aspirations and the organizational aspirations and we voluntarily take some effort to give something extra to the organization though nobody has forced us to do anything that that stage is called the um, advocacy stage of the engagement model. Drivers of employee engagement are of course, a sense of personal accomplishment, benefits, career opportunities provided by the organization, 
sufficient channels for communication, confidence in senior management training and development opportunities. So, the first one is um, the sense of personal accomplishment is uh, very important like um, having a meaningful job is very important where, where we know like what we can contribute um, like how, how we can contribute in giving a shape to that particular job and um, so that we get a proper feedback of what is happening so which gives us a sense of personal fulfillment and accomplishment that is a meaningful job is very much one of the important factors for employee engagement. And the benefits that the organization provide is also very important then having sufficient channels of communication where, where we encourage upward communication, horizontal communication so that we discuss with each other and find out solutions to the problems. These are very important factors for employee engagement. Confidence in the senior management's ability, expertise, the decision making power. These are also important factors of employee engagement. Also, having training and development opportunities are very important so that we can grow, we can develop our competencies for solving certain issues at hand. Drivers of engagement vary by the nature of the industry which is like high technology retail, financial services, professional services, civil service, all, all these different um, industries have their own goals, missions and accordingly like performance standards and all this will determine wh what factors are necessary for a better performance of the organization and the employee and accordingly the drivers for engagement will vary because different aspects, dif different resources are required to perform job and the nature of job in these in different industries also vary. Each job has its own personality pattern and it asks for different competencies from its employees and as a result the drivers of engagement may vary from industry to industry. Organizational context like the growth of the growth phase that the organization is in, the privatization of the organization, restructuring, downsizing, mergers and integration, employee demographics, all this will lead to a specific organizational culture. A climate to where, which which can be whether whether there is a trust whether there is a cooperation whether there is open communication and not whether a particular culture is given importance or not how diversity is looked in all these organizations will depend on the these organizational contexts and these factors will again affect the engagement employee engagement process. Also it may vary from country to country based on the national values which are there. Covered the different attitudes like the which are more important for the workplace like the job satisfaction, job involvement, organizational commitment employee engagement. Next we are going to discuss in the next upcoming chapter is about emotions in the workplace and working moods and also work moods and we will discuss in details about the emotional intelligence, the factors of emotional intelligence, the values, what are values, how it is different from attitude what are the different types of values like personal values and organizational values, societal values etc. how they develop and how they are interrelated with the attitudes and then we will discuss certain questions based on all the things that we have 
learning attitudes. Thank you. After discussing employee engagement, we will continue with emotions and we will get to know like what are the emotions, primary emotions, secondary emotions and uh, what are the importance of emotions in the workplace. Emotions are, are a state of physiological arousal and changes in facial expressions, gestures, positive and subjective feelings. Emotions are linked with basic adaptive behaviors such as helping others, retreating, seeking comfortable work area and verbally attacking someone for starting an erroneous rumor. Adaptive behavior helps a person in adjust to changes. Emotions can also have negative effects like disgust and fear can disrupt behavior and relationships. So, due to all these reasons, emotions in the workplace, thing, studying emotions that people show in the workplace is an important area of organizational behavior today. In the earlier years, we were not much concerned about the um, ways people express their emotions or, or how to make the organization um, a, a suitable place where people can um, express their emotions both positive and negative that that was not much of the concern but as as organizations are becoming more employee oriented more importance more importance is given to the employees and their well being so these emotions in the workplace is finding a major major part in the OB um, literature and research also and also like it, it has become a major issue for the practitioners how to like um, deal with emotions in the workplace. The, there are like eight primary emotions um, that people face in like fear, surprise, sadness, joy disgust, anger, anticipation and acceptance. These primary emotions can vary in intensity. The mildest form of emotions are called moods. A mood is of low intensity, but it is long lasting in nature emotional state. Moods act as subtle emotional factors that affect day to day behavior. Emotions last for short time frames um, such as minutes or hours, moods often last for longer time periods such as hours or days. So, so we have to be careful about generating a positive mood. The work environment should be designed in such a way um, like it helps in nurturing or generating positive moods, work moods because it, the duration for which moods last are much longer than emotions which could be like for only for certain minutes or for hours but when, when it gets prolonged it becomes but the intensity it is low in intensity but the feeling remains for a longer period of time, then it is called moods. Secondary emotions are emotions such as aggression, love or remorse, contempt, optimism, disappointment. These are called secondary emotions. These are called secondary emotions because it generates from the combination of two or more primary emotions. Work moods are feelings that the employees have about their jobs that are highly dynamic. They can change within a day, hour or minute. These variable attitudes towards their job are called work moods. An employee's work mood towards their can be described 
as ranging from negative I hate this task to positive I am excited to take this new challenge and from very weak to strong and intense. Strongly positive work moods are visible in the passion, the energy that the employee um, takes and the vitality and the enthusiasm with which that person does the job. They lead to closer attention to customer service, lower absenteeism, greater creativity and in better interpersonal cooperation. Work moods are directly affected by like the managerial practices like sharing praise, creating an atmosphere uh, filled with occasional fun, humor in the workplace and providing a workplace filled with pleasant surroundings and um, engaging in and encouraging a uh, reasonable amount of social interaction where people can talk in informal ways, share their feelings, where there are fun elements present, there is less of formality, all, all these helps in generating a positive work mood and a positive work mood where it leads to a less stress in the mind and it can lead to better creativity and cooperation and better work performance. Uh, expressions of emotions are fairly common. Some facial ex expressions are influenced by learning and are unique to the national culture. Despite some cultural differences, facial expressions of fear, anger, happiness and sadness are similar around the world. A difference is however, how often these expressions occur in various cultures. So, this, this culture plays of course a part in expression of emotions and while we have to know about this culture specific expression of emotions, the intensity with which the ex emotion is expressed, how it is expressed, how, how frequently it is expressed, these may vary from culture to culture and we have to be conscious about these factors because we, when, when we are doing businesses in different countries, if we have to adapt to the culture of that place, we need to know about the expression of emotions, particular emotions in those countries, otherwise the organization may send a very wrong message to the um, country and its people about the respect that they have about that country and its people which may in turn affect the business of the organization. Affective events theory as this tool AET, it tells about work events which trigger positive and negative emotional reactions. Personality and mood determine the intensity of the emotional response. Emotions can influence a broad range of work performance and job satisfaction variables. Implication of the theory is that Individual response reflects emotions and mood cycles. Current and past emotions affect job satisfaction. Emotional fluctuations create variations in job satisfaction and performance. Both negative and positive emotions can distract workers and reduce job performance. So, it is like both negative and positive emotions too much of both the things are like it may be distracting for the workers and emotional fluctuations can create of course, differences in performance and the current and past emotions they affect job satisfaction. So, so you can see like the Mm, work environment in which is like the characteristics of the job, the demands of the job, requirements for emotional labor, 
all these um, lead to certain work events like daily hassles and daily uplifts in the job, which will lead to emotional reactions which are positive or negative in nature. And this is again defined by the personality factors, predispositions like the personality or personal predispositions like the personality of the individual and the mood. So, how what is your mood will help what is your personality and your related mood will define how you interpret the work events and what reactions emotion and reactions you develop towards it whether it is positive or negative. The emotional reactions that you develop for your job will have an effect on the job satisfaction and the job performance. So, um, managing emotions for compensations is called emotional labor. So, um, it may happen in organizations that you have to enhance fake or suppress your emotions to modify the emotion, emotional expression. So, what are the norms regarding it? You, you can be uh, acquire, you can acquire it from during your socialization processes by asking your colleagues, or they may be stated and in training and selection manual. So. Uh, emotional labor is one of the very crucial issues of managing emotions in the workplace um, because you have to manage your emotions for your come there are certain jobs like the jobs of receptionist air hostess and others if you are if you if you you are in the like you, you help providing services like you are a counselor or you are a doctor or or you are a nurse, what is required that the, the pleasant mood, pleasant emotion is one of the primary factors what is required as a part of your job. But it is not true that every day you as a person will be having the similar moods or the similar emotions. There could be happenings in your life which may lead to a very opposite emotions in your like from your family life you can have those opposite emotions, but when you are come to the workplace you have to like suppress those emotions and behave in a very different way, appear jolly and be appear in a pleasant mood which may lead to emotional labor and emotional stress stress which which could be a very stressful factor for you. So, how to do it like how to do the switch on and switch off because it is required as a part of your job requires training and um, you can also learn this by vicarious learning by observing your colleagues around you. And that is why we come to tell like emotions really play a very important part in your in organizations in how you provide your services, how you deal with your customers and ultimately how a person performs in the organization leading to organizational performance. So, there are two ways for individuals to manage their emotions through surface acting where one regulates his or her emotional expression and through deep acting where one modifies feelings in order to express a desired emotion. In both like deep and surface acting, there is a conscious effort being employed. Although emotional labor may be organizationally effective, one word of caution is that it may lead to burnout of the employees. So, what the organization should be careful about is to find out a way for release of emotions. So, that though in the work situation you, you re require to maybe act in the opposite way than the true emotion that you are running through throughout that day, maybe there is a some place, someone to confide upon to share your genuine emotions 
and release your pent up emotions that are there within you. Because day in and day out, if you have to do this emotional labor and play with your emotions, change with your emotions and the deep and the or the surface structure, if you go on doing this continuously day after day, it may lead to burnout of the employees and that employee may become less productive in nature. We will continue with emotional intelligence, uh, values in the workplace, values from the Indian concept in the um, later discussion to be followed. Thank you.